In 1975, the United States launched two unmanned spacecraft toward Mars in a groundbreaking project named Viking. Each spacecraft consisted of a lander and an orbiter. After nearly a year cruising to Mars, Viking 1 and Viking 2 landed successfully and became the first spacecraft to return detailed information from the surface of the Red Planet. The Viking landers were designed and built by Martin Marietta, now part of Lockheed Martin. A major mission scientific objective was to learn about the chemistry and possible biology of Martian soil. To do so, the robotic spacecraft needed to obtain soil samples for analysis by the lander's science instruments. This video describes the design and operation of the Viking lander's surface sampler acquisition assembly hardware. For the past few years, I have been creating a high-fidelity digital 3D model of the Viking lander. This ongoing project is intended to document and preserve the effort of the Viking project team. The digital model will be used to illustrate the surface sampler operation. The work in progress model is freely available at this link. The Viking lander's surface sampler consisted of a few major components. A shroud unit or cover seals and protects the pre-sterilized collector head until shortly after landing on Mars. A collector head or scoop digs into the surface of Mars and is mounted on the end of a boom or arm. The arm extends from and retracts into the main surface sampler housing assembly mounted on the lander. Inside the lander is an electronics unit called the surface sampler control assembly. The SSCA translates computer commands into sampler electromechanical activity. Before describing the collector head and shroud in detail, the boom and housing will be examined. The extensible boom allows the collector head to reach from the lander down to the Mars surface. The boom must be strong enough to push the collector head into soils across a range of cohesion or shear strength. The boom can extend about 10 feet, only a portion of which is seen here. The boom is hollow, formed of top and bottom foil skins made of Carpenter Custom 455 stainless steel, only 8 thousandths of an inch thick. The foils are heat treated to maintain a curved cross section similar to a common metal tape measure. The two back-to-back -back foils are welded together along their edges and form a stiff and very light tube. Despite their axial strength, the foils can be easily flattened together, greatly reducing the volume of the boom for storage. Within the boom is a flat conductor cable, whose 26 copper conductors carry electric power and signal lines to the collector head. The cable is held under spring tension by a flat clamp with a slack loop to accommodate any stretch in the cable during the multi-year lifetime of the Viking spacecraft. The cable needs to remain accurately centered in order to lie safely between the flattened boom foils. The middle section of each foil is etched to thin it to just four thousandths of an inch, leaving space for the very thin cable. The collector head attaches to the boom via a fitting or sleeve. The boom foil skins fit loosely on the sleeve to accommodate thermal expansion and flexing during use. A cloth dust seal prevents Mars dust from entering any gap between skin and sleeve. Two spring-loaded bolts form a simple suspension for the skin-to-sleeve connection. The boom unfurls from the sampler housing, which also provides the azimuth and elevation articulation needed to direct the collector head towards points of interest on the Martian surface. The housing pivots on a pedestal mounted to a shelf extending from the lander. The hollow pedestal allows electrical lines to pass into the sampler housing via a connector on the bottom. The housing drive mechanisms are protected by a Nomex cloth dust skirt. A gear train drives the sampler's azimuth or sideways movement through a worm wheel gear fixed to the pedestal and a worm gear driven by a gear motor. Another gear train, whose gearbox is largely speculative here due to lack of detailed references, drives the elevation movement. The natural friction between a worm gear and a stationary worm wheel gear allows the imbalanced sampler housing to maintain its elevation angle without requiring a brake mechanism. Two mirrors are mounted on the sampler boom support guides. The mirrors are not reflective in this 3D model rendering. 
The mirrors allow the lander's two cameras to view imaging targets on or near the ground obscured by the lander structure. An example is the temperature sensor mounted on the rim of footpad 2. Camera 1 can directly view only the outer portion of the sensor as seen in this Viking 2 image. The Viking team anticipated wanting to know if the inner sensor portion with the actual thermocouple wires had become buried in loose Mars soil during landing. A predetermined orientation of the surface sampler housing allows camera 1 to see a reflected view of the sensor. The photograph is an image from Viking 2 showing that the thermocouples on the inner end of the sensor were not buried. In contrast, a similar image from Viking 1 shows that its thermocouples were covered by soil, a difference of interest for a scientific analysis of temperature readings. The sampler boom is guided by channels and rollers on the housing support arms. When fully retracted, a small finger on the bottom of the collector head collar contacts a micro switch, causing the sampler control assembly to halt retraction. Excess retraction is also prevented by a V-shaped mechanical stop that limits inward travel. The boom enters the sampler housing through a white Nomex cloth dust curtain. Inside the housing, the boom's flattened foil skins wrap about seven times around a six-inch drum. Although the flattened boom is seen here neatly wrapping around the drum, shear stress between the top and bottom welded foils caused the actual wrap to be somewhat irregular. Extension and retraction of the boom is accomplished by another gear motor. To extend the boom, the motor drives a sprocket gear which engages holes punched along the edges of the boom to push the boom out of the housing. The drum freewheels as the boom emerges. The sprocket is not used to retract the boom. If the sprocket were simply driven in reverse, pushing the boom inward, the flexible flattened boom would tend to jam into the back of the sampler housing. Instead, a flip-flop mechanism moves an idler gear from the sprocket to the drum. The motor then drives the drum to pull and wind the boom inward while the sprocket freewheels. At its innermost point, the boom's flat conductor cable passes through a slot into the hollow rotating drum. A simple technique enables the unwinding and winding cable to transition to a fixed position cable segment emerging from the center of the drum. Enough slack exists in the cable to wrap around the stationary central hub about three times. As the boom changes from fully retracted to fully extended or the reverse, the cable gradually unwinds around the hub until it loosely fills the rotating drum at the midpoint of boom extension. The remaining boom travel causes the cable slack to progressively wrap around the stationary hub in the opposite direction from its original configuration. The motion is sped up by about four times here. After seven drum rotations, the boom extends about 10 feet. Viking's major goal was to assess Mars soil chemistry and possible living organisms past or present. Earthly contamination of the lander would bias the analysis. Thus, the entire encapsulated spacecraft was sterilized in a room-sized oven, which has not been done with any subsequent Mars landed vehicle. The surface sampler collector head scoop would directly touch every Mars soil sample prior to study and thus special cleaning preparation was given to sampler hardware. All disassembled parts of the collector head were ultra cleaned and specially sterilized during final assembly a few months prior to launch from Earth. To prevent recontamination, the collector head was sealed within a shroud unit. The shroud was pressurized with dry, sterile carbon dioxide gas until the lander was encapsulated within its protective aeroshell and bioshield capsules, which had their own pressurization system. The internal pressure prevented entry of contaminants. In the photograph, a test version of the shroud is shown pressurized by the collector's rear port. The final flight hardware was pressurized by a fill valve in the front of the shroud. Four pairs of stiff springs provide the force needed to reliably jettison the shroud after landing on Mars. The shroud clamps to the collector head collar via two latch hooks. An internal spring and the outward angled latch strike plate ensure the latches automatically disengage when unconstrained. 
The shrouded and pressurized collector head was then installed onto the spacecraft's sampler boom. With the latch hooks protected by the latch restraint bars, the pre-flight safety pins can be removed. To prevent inadvertent movement and damage to the sampler during launch and landing, the sampler housing is locked to a support post by a pin or rod. The collector head assembly serves to actuate movement of the pin, thus avoiding an additional mechanism. The head of the pin slots into a fitting on the bottom of the collector head collar. The pin body passes through a hole in the housing lower frame and then engages the post. The pre-flight shroud pressurization system was then reinstalled and it remained in place until lander encapsulation and overall sterilization prior to launch. After landing on Mars, the boom was extended a short distance to pull the pin from the post, freeing the sampler to move. Then the sampler was positioned in preparation for ejecting the shroud. Further boom extension cleared the shroud latch hooks from their restraint bars, allowing the shroud springs to eject the shroud. The collector head was rotated to release the sampler backhoe from the retainer wire. On Viking 1, the restraint pin unexpectedly did not fall free of the slotted fitting and lower guide bar. When the boom was retracted to park position, the pin caused a jam. After reproducing the sequence on this test lander, a fix was devised to elevate and extend the boom further. The photograph shows the actual Viking 1 restraint pin where it fell onto the Martian surface. With the pin dropped, the surface sampler acquisition assembly was ready for use. The surface sampler's major purpose was to scoop up and deliver small quantities of Mars soil to lander science instruments. In a typical pre-programmed operation, the sampler housing rotates to the direction of the target location, extends the boom the planned distance, then de-elevates toward the surface. Because of uncertainty in local topographic detail, the collector head is designed to prevent elevation over travel that might damage the sampler when hitting a soil hump or slope. The body of the collector head is mounted on a gimbal, allowing the head to pivot upwards upon contact with surface material. A microswitch within the gimbal opens when the collector head pivots about 10 degrees, triggering the control assembly to stop downward boom movement. A solenoid plunger pulls open the collector head lid. Another microswitch on the other side of the jaw verifies lid opening. Then the sampler boom extends a short distance further, pushing the collector head lower jaw into the Mars soil. The backhoe folds back to ensure unhindered boom extension if hitting a buried rock, for example. The lid is closed and the boom elevates with the soil sample. To deliver a soil sample for analysis, the sampler housing positions the collector head above the inlet of the appropriate science instrument. Seen here is a simplified representation of the biology instrument's processing and distribution assembly which supplies soil to the biology instrument within the lander. A gear motor within the collector head rotates it to an inverted position. Another microswitch triggers to stop the motor after 180 degrees of rotation. Then the solenoid controlling the collector head lid pulses a few times per second to shake soil particles through a grid of 2 mm holes in the top of the lid. A set of internal teeth within the lid break up clods of soil. Scientific analysis can now begin. The sampler backhoe enabled further study of Mars. The backhoe's primary role was to dig shallow trenches by pulling the collector head backward. This allows retrieval of soil samples buried under a few inches of soil. Shielded samples might harbor microbes that could not survive at the surface due to strong ultraviolet sunlight in Mars's ozone-free sky. Trenching also reveals physical properties of the soil, such as its tendency to be clumpy, cohesive, or crusty. A sensor on the underside of the jaw allows soil temperature to be measured while the collector head is in place. Seen here are a few of the many trenches dug by Viking landers 1 and 2 during their operational years on Mars. Metal brush bristles mounted on the backhoe are designed to scratch test Mars rocks, a simple way to assess the strength of rock edges and surface veneer. The image is from Viking Lander 1 during a scratch test of the rock nicknamed Metate 2. The backhoe contains a final hidden feature, two pairs of samarium cobalt magnets to assess the magnetic properties of Mars soil. 
Each pair consists of two magnets with a distinctive bullseye shape to enhance the visibility of any clinging particles, avoiding ambiguity with simple smudges which would have irregular shapes. The magnets are installed with shims that place each pair at a different depth within the magnesium backhoe so that iron-bearing soil particles can be exposed to different magnetic field strengths on the left and right halves of the backhoe. Images of the backhoe such as these taken by Viking 1 showed the clear presence of magnetic soil after a sampling operation had been performed. In order to test soil at different locations within reach of the sampler, the backhoe needs to be cleaned between experiments. A magnet cleaning brush assembly is fixed to the front edge of the lander. A pre-programmed sequence moves the collector head to swipe the backhoe through the brush. The image shows Viking 1's backhoe prior to a cleaning operation with prominent dark clinging particles. The missions of Viking 1 and 2 were triumphs of science, engineering, mission planning, and management. Spanning over six operational years orbiting and on the surface of Mars from 1976 to 1982, the two orbiters and two landers yielded a wealth of new information about Mars. Many of those discoveries were made possible due to the Viking Lander Surface Sampler Acquisition Assembly, a remarkable subsystem for a remarkable mission. I am grateful to the following organizations for allowing me to do research on the Viking artifacts they have preserved. The Viking Mars Missions Education and Preservation Project. The Museum of Flight. The California Science Center. The Virginia Air and Space Center. The NASA Langley Research Center. The Smithsonian National Air and Space Museum. Thank you all very much.